Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today I've got a really nasty integral for you, um, and of course we'll be solving it using Feynman's Technique. Um, and the the answer is a little bit messy too, but I mean it is a we do get a closed form expression for this. This actually um, this actually evaluates to something that doesn't involve special functions or anything like that. So uh, let's go. First step, we're just going to use integration by parts on this. We're going to let, we're going to, this is the formula, integral u dv is equal to uv minus integral v du. You guys all knew that. Um, we'll make the following substitution. We'll let our u just equal to x. That implies that our du is going to be dx. And we're going to let dv equal the rest of it, which is just sine x over 2 minus cosine x dx. Um, integrating that, and we would get v is equal to the natural log of 2 minus cosine x. Plugging that into our formula gives us this. So we have u times v evaluated from 0 to pi, because those were our bounds of integration. And you can see that the 0 term is going to go away because of this x right here. And the pi term, let's see, if we plug in pi for cosine x, we will get negative 1, so minus a negative 1, that's natural log 3 times pi. So that part will be pi natural log 3 minus this integral. All right. So I just wrote that down right there. That's, uh, that's what our new expression for i becomes. All right. And now I'm going to do something that might seem a little bit strange at first. Um, I'm going to rewrite that 2 minus cosine x as a 2 times 1 minus 1 half cosine x. Um, that's just to make our, uh, f uh, our reparameterization a little bit easier when it comes down to it. Um, so next, I'm just going to split that integral up using the properties of logarithms like this. Um, so it, it just becomes this. This is natural log 2 times natural log 1 minus 1 half cosine x. Um, so no, there shouldn't be any problem there. All right, and then I just, um, I evaluated this integral right here and combined it with this pi natural log 3 to just give us pi natural log 3 halves minus this integral, of course. Okay, now comes time for the reparameterization. We're going to let f of t equal this integral. And you, as you can see, I just took this integral and replace this one half with a t. And now we'll note a couple things about f of t. Um, if we evaluate f at one half, what do we get? We get exactly this integral. So our original integral is actually equal to pi natural log three halves minus natural or uh, f of one half. And if we evaluate our function at the point t is equal to 0, we get 0. Because we'll just have a 1 minus 0, which is 1, natural log of 1 is 0. So the whole integral evaluates to 0. All right, now we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, and then a little bit of manipulation. Um, so using the Leibniz rule just involves taking the partial with respect to the parameter of the integrand and leaving the rest of the rest alone. So initially this is what you get. This is the partial with respect to t of the integrand right here. And then I multiply the top and the bottom by t. And then I add 1 and subtract 1 from the integral so that we can get um, this integral minus this integral. Um, and you can see if we split this up, we'll have a 1 minus t cosine x in the top and bottom. That's right here. That simplifies to just 1 over t. And then we have minus this integral. So go ahead and pause the video if, you have, if you're a little bit confused on that stuff. Uh, on that step, it works out though. Okay. So next, I just evaluate this integral and bring the 1 over t outside of this integral. Okay. Now, you might think we're stuck here, but we're not. We can break out something called the Weierstrass substitution, or some people call it the uh, universal trigonometric substitution, or the tangent half angle 
substitution. But anyway, the substitution is this. We let, our, uh, we let u equal to tangent of x over 2. Now, I'm not going to derive the entire Weierstrass substitution uh, in this video, but I'm only going to include the parts that we're going to need in it. If you let u equal tangent x over 2, you will find that cosine x is equal to 1 minus u squared over 1 plus u squared, and that our dx is equal to 2 over 1 plus u squared. So, the next step is I just I just plug that in. Um, I replace cosine x with 1 minus u squared over 1 plus u squared and replace the dx with 2 over 1 plus u squared. And of course, we need to change our bounds of integration. If our u is tangent x over 2, then our upper bound is tangent of pi over 2. Uh, that is infinity. Our lower bound becomes tangent of 0 over 2, which is just 0. So that's our new expression for f prime of t. All right, and you'll see uh, in the next step, all I did was I simplify, I, I used some algebra, and I, I simplified this integrand right here and brought out that too. All right, and now you'll notice that we have a, uh, a form of the arc tangent integral right here. Notice that with respect to u, t plus 1 and 1 minus t are simply constants. So we can use this formula. This formula right here, the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over a squared, x squared, plus b squared is just pi over 2ab. Um, in our case, our a would be the square root of t plus 1, and our b would be the square root of 1 minus t. So plugging that into our formula, and we get this. We have that f prime of t is equal to pi over t minus this. All right, go ahead and uh, pause the video if you, if you want to do that yourself, but that's what it works out to be, and uh, it's it's really not it's not that difficult, um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show a lot of the work there. Um, all right, so now uh, we integrate f prime of t to get back to f of t. So the first one, the first integral right there, pretty easy to evaluate. The next one, it's not so bad. Um, it's just a trig sub. Um, you can let t equal um, either sine or cosine, and um, and and do the do the integral that way. Uh, of course, the motivation for that substitution would be to have the square root of either one minus sine squared or one minus cosine squared, um, and then it becomes it becomes easier to solve from there. Um, but if you evaluate that integral and combine it with uh, what you get when you evaluate this integral, this is what you end up with all in all. This, this is what it turns out to be. And again, I'm not gonna show the work because these, uh, these integrals are solvable using um, standard techniques, uh, but this is what you get. Our f of t is equal to pi times the natural log of the square root of one minus t squared and then that plus one. And then of course we have a constant of integration. Now don't forget we know uh, something about our f of t evaluated at 0. We know that it's equal to 0. So we have f of 0 is equal to 0, which um, is also equal to pi times the natural log of the square root of 1 minus 0 squared. So that's just 0. Um, so we have, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, that's, that's 1. So that ends up to be natural log 2. So 0 is equal to pi natural log 2 plus c, implying that c is equal to negative pi natural log 2. So we can plug that in. So we have f of t is now equal to this. All right, so we're, we're pretty much done. Uh, don't forget, we have an expression for i that is in terms of f of t. We know that i is equal to... Uh, pi times the natural log of 3 halves minus f evaluated at 1 half. Remember, way up here, we determined this. And now we know f of t, so we just plug in 1 half and we have our answer. All right, so let's, let's do that. So we have pi natural log 3 halves minus um, this when you plug in one half for t. Okay? Um, and then, then and then from here it's just simplification. 
this this is what you get this this simplifies to this pi natural log of quantity six times quantity two minus square root of three so like i said that that's kind of a that's a strange answer but that's what it turns out to be so in conclusion um this is true uh the integral from zero to pi of x times sine x all over two minus cosine x dx is equal to this junk right here well there you go guys um i hope you enjoyed that and we will see you next time